sweet career changes. Rio Ferdinand surprised many yesterday by announcing he is hoping to start boxing professionally at the age of 38. He is not the first person to change career in their 30s and beyond. So, uh, what do you need to think about if you fancy taking a different direction professionally? Quite a lot, I imagine. Yes, I think that's probably right, yeah. Uh, Mark Elliott and Catherine Forster both changed their careers in their 40s. Morning, both. Morning. Lovely to see you. We'll come to what you did in a moment. Uh, Corrine Mills is a careers coach. We need you. That's brilliant. Uh, we're also joined by Manchester United's former power development coach, Mick Clegg. He introduced boxing into the training regimes of the likes of Roy Keane, Wayne Rooney, and, Wayne Rooney even, and Cristiano Ronaldo. Morning, everybody. Morning, Morning. Uh, you also, let's start with you first of all. Um, did you also um, coach Rio as well with this? Yeah, yeah, Rio did it just the same. Did you ever guess when you were coaching him that he might one day just have a career change and want to become a professional boxer? Absolutely not. Roy Keane, yes, but not Rio. <laughs> really? So what was your reaction when you heard then? Well, it was stunning. Um, do you want me to tell the reason why? Yes. <laughs> right? Well, Rio, obviously, he's, he's older. But it's all about adaptation when you're changing careers. An adaptation for boxing is massive because generally you'll start as a young lad or girl because my uh, granddaughter is a 14-year-old boxer. Yay. She's not actually had a proper fight yet. Yeah. But you adapt to sparring and you take collisions on, on the edge, you see. Yeah. So when you're young and you're adapting to these small clashes in your head, everything is built up by your body and your brain to be able to cope with it. Coming in at 38 years old, he'll get some smashes in his head and that adaptation he hasn't developed over a long time. He can jump a okay. bush, though. I'm not sure you need, you need that in the ring. So, <laughs> so you're, you're convinced he can throw a punch, but perhaps not take one? Um, he can definitely throw a punch. His jab was one of the strongest jabs I've felt because of his his body, yeah. um, you know, the way his body's formed, uh, how powerful he was. Yeah. Um, that's fascinating, isn't it? Um, Catherine, you, you took a late career change. Just to explain to us what not, you not did. Not boxing, though, right? No, no. no. Um, not well, yet. basically, originally I was an actor. Um, then I started having kids. I couldn't pay the childcare, so I have been a full-time mother for 15 years, um, which I have really enjoyed, but now they're getting older and I'm sort of thinking, what will I do? So um, I originally thought between acting and journalism, and I thought, well, I'd really like to go into journalism, but no one is going to take me seriously, age 48. And then, as luck would have it, on Twitter, I saw uh, Fraser Nelson, the editor of The Spectator magazine. We're looking for interns. Uh, we don't want CVs. We don't want to know anything about you. Just do these tasks, wow. and we will judge purely on what you can do. So I wrote about... It's quite well, rare, that, isn't it? Very rare. To give that, wow. to, very rare. To give that opportunity. Yeah. And I knew when I saw it that this was my big job. <laughs> what did you write about? Um, I did a 200-word blog. I did a piece about um, inequality, if it was rising or falling. And then I had to do a three-minute audio file about uh, PMQs and put clips in the trade Mayor Jeremy Corbyn, which I very, very, very nearly gave up because that was really hard for me. And some ideas for articles. So basically, I wrote about politics and economics. And I beat lots of very young people. Um, very well educated people. Wow. Well, congratulations. And, and proof that it's, you know, it's, it's, you, you might have thought, oh, it's one of those things, I'll, I won't give it a go. You did give it a go, and it, yes. it's worked out brilliantly yes. for you. Yes. Well, one of your ex local MPs, George Osborne, is editing the London Evening Standard, so I sort of feel that anything's possible, really. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, what, what about you? you? You also did a late career change. Um, yeah, it feels weird saying late, doesn't it? I mean, I'm, I'm 44 now. Yeah. Um, so. But it is, I think it's some views late. But I, I didn't go to university, for example. So I started um, my career by going straight from A-level, straight into working. University wasn't for me then. Um, and then I did um, two diplomas in marketing as I carried on my working career um, simultaneously, uh, finishing my second uh, diploma just about four or five years ago now. Um, and after 15 years of working for a large energy company, decided it was time really to maybe unleash the mark. Unleash the <laughs> unleash mark? Unleash the mark. Where, yeah. where have you unleashed the mark? Well, it's, it's funny because <laughs> I was just watching the Foo Fighters there, and I, I used to be in rock bands myself, and I, I found it very very much that I was a square peg in a round hole being in a corporation. Right. So even though I wear the suit, um, I do have tattoos and what have you, and I used to be on stage. So... Um, so actually, I wanted to really just be more me than the corporate face. And, and now I run my own marketing consultancy company. And um, I started that two and a half years ago from scratch. So no clients straight out of the bat, um, but with just some uh, good experience, I've got to say, from the corporate world, but, but also from um, just a lot of passion and set up my own gigs, which was a great experience for marketing from the age of 18 onwards. Wow. Um, is it 
is it ever too late to have a kind of complete change? No, because we're all living and working longer, aren't we? And, and actually, I'm working with people in their 60s who are, you know, looking at what they want to do next for right. career-wise. My, my yoga teacher used to be a bank manager. You know, there's people who've got a lot of life to live. And if you feel that you are, you know, in the wrong job, you're not expressing who you are, then there are lots of options and yeah. lots of different ways to configure your career. I suppose if, you're, if you're, you feel like you're trapped in that role. I think most people know, you know, all of us know, being in jobs where you feel absolutely miserable because it's not, it just doesn't feel right for you. Mm. But you don't have to stay there. You can, there are options, there are things that you can go and do. The first thing that strikes me is the financial commitment because, you know, leaving your job that you've had for however many years, mm. it is... Yeah. is it's worrying from that point of view, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, you know, for Mark, setting up your own business, you'll have had to fund that, you'll have yep. had to wait till the income comes in. But, you know, you don't jump into these things blindly. You take calculated risks. So this is where you do your planning, you do your business plan, you, you work should. out Let's put that way. Yeah. What, <laughs> you know, what your sales cycle is, and you're realistic about all of those things. Um, and you do need to, with all of these things, what's the worst that can happen a lot of times? So, you know, if after a year it hadn't worked out, you know what? go and get yourself another job or right. something that was halfway between where you were before and where you want to be. There's right. actually, there's no kind of real cul-de-sacs. I, I think what's really important, particularly nowadays, is that you need to be versatile career-wise because right. jobs are changing yeah. and you need to change with it and there are options. Catherine, what would your top tip be? <sighs> go for it. <laughs> yeah. Feel the fear. What's that book called? Feel the fear and do it anyway. Right? Un unleash the Catherine. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Unleash the marble. Um, I think plan ahead and, and transition rather than jump. I think is the sensible right. thing. Okay. I, I just wanted to know from Mick. What, what are the rest of the Manchester United players? You think of, of Rio Ferdinand going into boxing? Well, they'll be stunned as I am. I think. Um, you know, the, the fact is that this is an extreme job change. Yeah. yeah. And it's one that's extremely dangerous. So he's taking on a lot. And if there is a tip, he needs to get into his cave, his man cave. He needs to concentrate on his training, not all the peripheral stuff that goes on around it. He needs to manage his team because he will be the manager, like Alex Ferguson used to be at him. Yeah. He needs to manage his team and make sure he gets what he needs. And if he doesn't, he could end up in serious trouble. And not only that, it's his children that's a problem. He's got to be looking after their interests. So if he's going to box, he better be ready to box properly. Advice. Okay. Hard to Thank unleash you. the mark when you're stuck in the man cave, though, isn't it? I mean, yeah. you go, go combine all these things together. Thank, <laughs> Thank you very you much. All Thank so you. much for I'm that. Not going really <laughs> good advice. Thank you. Um, in a moment, uh, we'll be looking ahead to the BBC's opera season. First, though, a last brief look at the headlines wherever you are.